Number 76, the 5 amp current through a 1.5 Henry inductor is dissipated by a two ohm resistor in a circuit like that in figure 23. Before with the switch in position two, okay. What is the initial energy in the inductor? All right, so basically um, we have the formula right from the past several problems that we've done, maybe 10 or 15 problems ago. We know that the energy in an inductor is gonna be equal to one half multiplied by the inductance multiplied by the current squared. So what we need to know is we need to know the inductance and we need to know the current in order to find the energy, right? So here, they told us the values. 1.5 Henry inductor. The current here is gonna be five amps. Square that, and now we can simply calculate that. Okay, so this is the energy stored in that inductor. So there's gonna be 0.5 multiplied by 1.5 times five, then squared. So this is about 18.75, I guess, you know, 18.8, .8, but you know whatever about the sig figs. So there's the amount of energy that is now stored, okay, with six amps, uh, excuse me, five amps of current flowing through it. So this is now, that's letter A. Letter B, it says, how long will it take the current to decline to 5% of its initial value? So now whenever we're talking about an RL circuit, we're talking about like time, you know, over over this amount of time, you know, what's the uh, what's the final current or something like that, or we're dealing with percentages and we're talking about time periods. We have to be dealing with one of these two formulas, possibly three formulas, you know, depending upon the nature of the question. So anytime they use the word decline, okay, you're going to be using this exponential decay formula here. All right, so this says that the um, that the current at some particular point in time is equal to that initial current or the max current. Or in this problem, the initial current will be five amps. Uh, multiplied then by e raised to the negative elapsed time divided by the time constant. So they want to now find how long will it take the current to decline to 5% of its initial value. Now you got to think about this. They're talking about percentages. So what I have to do here is I have to divide out like this max current here or the initial current. Because I know once I get now a proportion here on the left hand side, I know this I can relate to percentages, right? Imagine you had two over 10. And I said, what percentage is two of 10? And you would tell me, oh, Andrew, that's so easy. It's 20%. Yes, you are correct. So if this is 20%, right, let's, you, let's add another zero here, make it even easier. So if this was 20 over 100, and I asked you what percent of 20 is that of 100, or excuse me, yeah, it would be just 20%, right? So if I change this to a 10, what would that be? Well, that would be 10% now, right? And if I change this to then a five instead of a 10 now, that would be then 5%, right? Now notice that this is the decimal form. In other words, if you actually divided this on out, it would have been 0 0.05. And you know this in decimal form would be converted to 5% in percentage form. So what I'm trying to say here, a long-winded way, is I'm trying to say that this thing here is going to be equivalent to this thing here, which is then equivalent to this thing here. So I know that this is gonna be 0.05, okay? Now that's E raised to the negative T over tau. So it's asking us now how long. So the variable of interest here is how long it's the time, okay? Now, why don't we just, uh, why don't we just solve for tau? Because we need tau, right? We need to know it. So how do we find the time constant? Well. That's where this formula comes in. The time constant, remember, is simply going to be the inductance divided by the resistance. And the inductance here is gonna be 1.5 Henry's, and the resistance here they told you was two ohms. So simply divide that now, 1.5 by two. So this is going to be about a quarter, 0.75. So this is now the, it's almost looking like a wave function, but you know what I mean. So this now works out to be this, 0 0.05 equals E to the negative T over 0 0.75. And now we're thinking to ourselves, well, <laughs> how am I gonna solve for this, right? How am I gonna solve for that? Well, the whole goal of algebra is always to isolate the variable. If you notice this variable is not only tied up in this fraction, but it's also tied up in this function, right? The E function. So the first step is I gotta get rid of the outer function. In other words, I gotta get rid of the E. How do we do that? Well, E is the base of the natural logarithm. So what that means is that I can take the natural log of both sides, okay, ln of both sides. 
So you might notice that this is very similar to if I had like, let's say base 10 here, instead of E, I put a 10, then this would have been log of both sides. All right, you might remember that from way back when, when we were doing um, decibel calculations. So this is though an E now, okay? So it's the natural log. So then I'm gonna plug in this side 0 0.05 and I'm gonna plug in this side, E to the negative T over 0 0.75. Now the natural log literally cancels this E. Okay, and what's left is this exponent. It is no longer though an exponent, all right? It kind of basically just, if you want to think about it, brings it down as like a now a, a linear line item, so to speak. So this just becomes like a, a regular old fraction now on the right-hand side. And the ln of 0.05 is an actual number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate it, ln of 0.05, okay? And this works out to be now negative uh, 2.995, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna write a three for now. But when I do the calculation, I'm gonna use the exact number. So if you now notice, right, both sides are negative, so you can just get rid of the negative sign and make your life easy now, write it neatly. Three is equal to T over 0 0.75. How do I solve this? Just simply cross multiply these two terms, right? So take that and multiply it by then, take the three-ish, I'm using the 2.99 value, multiply it by the 0.75, and that now works out to be a time value of 2.25. 2.25 considering the rounding, considering the rounding uh, seconds, all right? So after an elapsed time of two and a quarter seconds, the uh, current here in the uh, circuit will be 5% of, or decline to 5% of its initial value, all right? So, uh, and also, by the way, by the way, this word here, decline to, is extremely important. Declining to 5%, oh boy, well, there goes the madman. Um, so declining to uh, 5% of the, uh, declining to, sorry, a little distracted. Declining to 5% um, of its initial value is like saying that the final value is five and the initial value is 100. But imagine they change this one word on you and it says decline by 5% of its initial value. Well then, guess what? The final value is now 95 over 100. So now the decimal would be 0.95, not 0 0.05. So one literally, one little word changes. You skip over this and it could be right or wrong. You might get 50-50, but if you focus on it, the word two means that the final value is 5% of the initial, so this is five over 100. If it said it, it declines by 5%, that means you're essentially subtracting 5% from the initial uh, value. So that's why it would have been 95 over 100. All right, so just be careful about that one word. Um, I should have highlighted it earlier, but it just kind of, you know, as I'm doing the problem, um, just kind of happens, nat you know, automatically. I don't want to say naturally, but uh, automatically at this point. So, because um, none of this is natural. So letter C, uh, calculate the average power dissipated and compare it with the initial power dissipated uh, by the uh, resistor. So anytime you have to now uh, calculate, you know, average power dissipated and, you know, wh what I think we're gonna do is, um, let's take a look at letter C. I'll put it on down here in blue maybe. So letter C. We know that power can be calculated by the change in energy divided by the change in time, right? So how much is the energy changing by? Well, um, here it says the, uh, let's see. So what we can do here is, there's a couple of ways we can do this, okay? So this is the initial power, right, dissipated by the resistor, what we calculated up here. This is, I'll call it initial, oh, excuse me, that's the initial energy, not the initial power, sorry. This is initial energy, okay? Now the question is, well, all right, what's the final energy, right? What would be the final energy? So um, what I'd have to find is I'd have to find the current, right? I'd have to find the current at the end. Now no longer is the current in the circuit five. That was the initial current. It's not five anymore. It's now I'm going to assume that, you know, we're talking about this being 5% of the initial. So no longer is it five. What's 5% 5 of five? So take five and multiply it by 0.05 and that works out to be a quarter. So now this is 0.25, and that's the value you're gonna square. So simply now take that and do point one half, I'm calculating the energy, times 1.5, times then 0.25 squared. 
Okay, I'm just calculating this energy. So the new energy or the final energy, we'll call this EI, and we'll call this EF. The final energy here is about 0 0.0469 or so. All right. So wait a minute, if this is the final and this is the initial, couldn't I just subtract the two to find the change in energy here? Yes, of course, right? Yes, of course. So I'm gonna to try to use the exact answer. So I'm gonna go back in the calculator, use the approximately 18.75 value and subtract down on this exact 0 0.046875. And this works out to be now a change value of 18, 18.7. 18.703, you know, blah, 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 blah. All right. And that's then going to be the change in time. Well, how long did it take to drop by 5%? Well, that was the point of part B, right? It took 2.25 seconds. So plug in 2.25 seconds. And now do the math. And by the way, you know, plug in that exact answer. Actually, what was the exact answer? Yeah, it was 2.24679999. So I'm going to divide it by that value, okay? So this works out to be then about 8.32, 8.32, and that's now in terms of watts or joules per second, okay? So again, this is the average power. Now what I need to find is I need to find the initial power, right? How can I find the initial power? Well, we can change our formula, right? We can say that this is the average because it's the change in energy over the change in time, right? It's like the slope, average change, all right? Now the power at the start, or we can say initial. Now remember, this is the energy that's initial, but it might be hard to then find the power initial because it's like, well, what is the change in time initially, right? So instead I'm gonna look and I'm gonna think about maybe another formula of power that might relate, you know, currents and I don't know, maybe resistances. So the current, remember that the power could equal the current squared multiplied by the resistance. That's a formula from way back when. So this could now be five amps squared multiplied by a resistance of two. Now this would be the initial power. So five squared is 25 times two is gonna be 50, 50 watts, okay? This is the initial power now. So wait a minute, if this is the initial power and this is the final power, all right, how, well, they didn't ask us for, for percents, but they're asking us to compare, right? So how do you compare? Well, you can find a percentage change if you want. You can find how much this average uh, power decreased by. So why don't we do that? 8.3 to over 50. So let's see how much it declined or so let's just calculate. So 8.32 divided by 50. So what this is saying now, it declined to, okay, 0.166 of its original value. In other words, it declined to 16.6% of its original value. In other words, it declined by, it declined by 83.4 roughly percent. All right, it declined to and it declined by. However you wanna call it, you know, depends. How do you wanna compare them? You can subtract the difference too and just find the change in power. There's a whole bunch of ways to view it. There is no right answer to that. I mean, several answers are right. You know, it could be wrong. You could say it changed by, you know, 5%, 2%, those are wrong, but. You know, there's a couple of ways to state the right answer. So, guys, anyway, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. I hope this helped. Uh, strange problem. Not strange, but, you know, a little, little challenging here. But hopefully the method isn't that bad. All right? You just got to consider what you know, what you need to find, and you got to think about how do I get there. All right? Guys, again, I'll see you soon. Take care.